Welcome to West Midlands Open College on the Church Leadership and Management. And I'm um, your lecturer today. And most of you now know my name, Dr. John Lou Komona. And our web address appears on the screen. And the info for contact details, you will just use the same details as appear on the screen. Today I want to introduce to you the Church Leadership and Management, which is part of the development programs that we have put together. These are tailor-made, tailor-made to suit your needs and most of you are very happy to hear about this development. But the good news is we do map these programs to what we call as the quality credit framework which is used in the United Kingdom, meaning what they stipulate in terms of the credit values, the, work, uh, the learning hours. We also use a similar system to enable you be able to learn in a structure that's not so different from the rest of the UK. And the UK is a very good place where standards are set and I believe people that get qualifications from the UK understand this. The quality systems that we go through is very, very good and I want you to enjoy. Now before I go any further, let me just go through the structure of the course. Some of these might go through a, a review, but any changes will let you know. However, let me proceed. The church leadership and management, as you see it on the screen here, is broken up into several units. But today we are starting with unit one. And the whole this year, we will probably just work on unit one. And after you finish, wait for the launch of the unit two, three, and four. Now, in terms of what we call the credit system, we will be able to give you credit values for this program if you choose to go through the assessment route. If you don't go through the assessment route, we will just award you the continuous professional development. And then we will proceed as normal. Unit 1 is the vision management and uh, the credit value for this, if you went to, uh, through the, uh, the, the assessed route, is 12 credits. These are internally developed by WMOC. The guided learning hours, minimum 20 hours. And also directed learning hours, minimum 15 hours. Guided learning hours, these are the ones that you are in front of a tutor. You're learning with the tutor, either one-to-one -one or in a classroom. Then 15 hours, are these are the ones that you are asked to go and do homework and do your own research and read up about the topic. Now, what would you learn in church leadership and management? Number one, five, four major outcomes. These are how to organize a local church, the functional structure. A, number two, the overall vision of the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ, we talk about the church as it is, not the local congregations where you go in terms of your meetings. And we look at the number two, three, or number three, is supportive vision of a local congregation and how it fits in the main vision of the Church of Christ based on the Great Commission. Here you're going to learn how does your congregation fit into the vision of the Church of Christ. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and other Gospels, Jesus Christ, before he left, he told the disciples, go here into the world and make disciples of all nations. And if you read through that, he described what it, it is that they have to teach. That is the vision of a church. There is no, uh, there isn't any other vision. So every vision of a church that is laid down in your objectives must lead to a evangelism, to teach people about Jesus Christ. Then you also, number four, learn how to support the vision of a local ministry. How do you support the vision of a local ministry? And this is what will determine whether you've learned or not. If these outcomes are achieved, as you see them here on the screen, then we say that you have definitely qualified or you've gained something. Now this program, how is it assessed? For those who go through the assessment route, um, you have to abide by the following. A 
And if you put the, the actual booklet, there it starts from CPD, award, then certificate, then diploma. So CPD is available, the same program if you don't get assessed, then award if you get assessed. Now here, how would you be assessed? The candidates are assessed by coursework with the number of evidence recorded. Now, evidence required is as listed in what we call the table A. This table is also found in every other uh, course that we, we run uh, uh, by WMOC. This table gives you the criteria. Here we go. How would you be assessed? There's a number of assessment criteria. Here it says produce agreed evidence to show that you have knowledge of what a vision is and possible ways of how a local church can be organized. And here is either referral, fail or pass. Referral simply means you can go work on these materials if it doesn't meet the criteria, teacher will be able to give you feedback. Fail, you've tried your best but you couldn't just make it. Pass, you've done it. And the evidence will be agreed between you and the tutor. There's a number of, way, of ways of uh, doing the, the, the assessment. This could be professional discussion, written work, interviews, etc. Your tutor will talk to you about this. Now, P2, provide a document with 500 words describing the overall vision of the Church of Christ. If you provide that evidence in a written document, or as the case might be, you will be able to pass. Then P3, describe the differences between a local church and the overall body of Christ in the way the Great Commission is carried out. Produce either a 1,000 word document, a 1,000 word document, or a poster or a PowerPoint presentation which you require to present to an audience. Group work is acceptable so long as each individual has contributory uh, uh, component. Contributory components are these, when you're doing group work uh, assessment, it must be clear what you add to the group. If your participation is zero, you won't be, you won't be uh, awarded this criteria as a member of the group. So the one running the group must be able to keep notes, must be able to pinpoint that uh, you, add, you, add, you added that, you inputted that, so that we know that you participated. Okay. So this is how you'll be assessed. It's by coursework. Everything I'm reading here, you're producing coursework materials. And in our breakdown of how much percentage of the overall coursework you need to be able to pass this course, it will be given to you through our centers. It's very clear. Then, here in this assessment criteria, table A, which is also available for other courses, what you require for P4, by way of an interview, record your findings, with a local church minister leading a particular congregation. What are you going to record here? In a, you can either produce a questionnaire, a questionnaire or you can do an audio tape. You speak into the minister. What are you going to be looking at on how they reach out to the community? How is their plan of evangelism? How do they reach to the community to fulfill the vision of, of, of the church? How they conduct home visits of their members? Do they do this? How do they do it? Because you want to learn uh, how they do that. Ask what the vision of your congregation is. As a matter of fact, we do know when Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 28, go here into the world and make disciples of all nations, he casted a vision. This is what I want you to be doing. The last words are much more important than the first because that is the conclusion of the matter. Then he says, you go. And he talked about that power has been given to him now he entrusted this now to the church and the first apostles took on the mantle to do this. Now, if he said that to the church, to the apostles at that time, he is saying the same thing to us. Now the congregation that you're gonna interview, find out whether or not the activities they point to winning souls for Christ. That's very important. And if you do that, you will do very well indeed. Now what evidence are you going to produce in P4? Evidence can be a video, interview, notes, and answers, or audio recording. If you want, and like, like you can see um, in uh, recording this lesson, you can do the same. 
but ask for consent. And if you find difficulties to ask for consent, you can get a letter from the college, they write for you, and you present it to the people that you want to approach. I beg your pardon. Then once they, they consent, they sign it, because you're going to present this material for assessment. Third party will look at it. A third party is a person that, apart from the original person that looked at the material. So you tell them this material will be taken for assessment. Are you willing to be recorded? Either the voice or your face by video. If they say yes, well and good. Even the questionnaire as well. You must ask them if they consent to pass this information. If they don't consent, don't interview them because we need that material for assessment. And an assessment has got a, a, a process. There's number one, your tutor and yourselves you go through. After the tutor and, you, and yourself you go through, there is a second uh, assessor who comes in called the internal verifier. They go through. After the internal verifier goes through, the external verifier may go through too, depending on the type of assessment method that you are subscribed to. It's very critical that you get consent for this. So, are you happy with that? If you want any uh, questions, you should always pause the video, then you, you proceed. P5. Identify and list the number of ways which can evidence that a leader, either a deacon, choir master, or any department head, is supporting the vision of the local congregation. How would you know? How would you know that? So you need to identify. Here, when we say identify, we don't want you to start describing. Just make a list. Number one, he opens the church on time. Number two, he comes to prayer. Things like that. Just make a list. Don't describe. The difference between describing and listing is huge. Describing, explaining, you're going into details. But when we say identify, we simply ask you A, B, C, D. Make a bullet point list. That's all you do. Don't overdo the work that you're not supposed to do. And uh, here, I think you can agree, agree with the assessor uh, what type of evidence you're going to provide. It could be a word written document. It could be a professional discussion that you have with your supervisor or your assessor, or it could be a PowerPoint presentation that you now present to the um, an, an audience um, under assessment, or as the case might be. But what I want you to do as a candidate is to know your rights. Know what you are supposed to be given by the tutor. This resource is for the tutors and as well as for the candidates. You can learn through this. P6. Describe a scenario where you think a department head working under a local minister might be in conflict with the vision of the local church. Now, when we say local church, we say congregations. For example, if you go to your church, the name of the church, that's called a congregation A. Okay, are you happy with that one? Now, P6 is very critical. We do know that conflicts do arise from time to time. Even in the Bible, there were times when the, the Apostle Paul uh, were in conflict with each with, uh, or with one another as, as apostles and several times if you go through church history there's been sp sp people springing out of the mainstream they set up their own churches etc etc some of that was not bad really because there was a refine uh, re re refi there was a refinement in the doctrine that is to say some people believed that the way the church was set up afterwards had gone off the tangent meaning they have left the basic teaching of Christ. So therefore, they could not convince the people there to go back to the foundation of the gospel. Therefore, as the scripture stipulates, do not be equally yoked to the unbelievers. If people stop believing what the truth is, they have a right to break away. Now, before that happens, if you go through these topics, you begin to understand how certain things can be done very well. From the word go, if a church minister is founded, or the church board is founded on the rock, Jesus Christ. They are doing the right things. How would you begin to see or predict that certain people are now deviating and going into conflict with the work of the local church? This is what we want to find out. And then we can mitigate and prevent that happening where a split occurs. We want people as a matter of a major outcome of this cause is that people become mature in the Lord. They learn how to handle conflict. They learn how to resolve conflicts. They learn how to identify conflicts before they happen. And that way, we can, we're going to grow in unity as a body of Christ. 
So this course will give you those outcomes. And what kind of evidence are you going to produce here? It depends on the agreement. Uh, at initial assessment, if your learning styles uh, pointed to a particular direction, probably your assessor will have agreed with you how you'll be assessed. Now, after you've done all this, the role of the assessor is to help you track your learning. They'll give feedback. They'll fill in what we call a candid record sheet, which is already on your on your um, CD. If you are on the CD system, probably you've got a CD like that. Um, it, it should have come on a, a CD like, like that one, because every lesson has got a CD like that. Others probably will pay a bit more money, they've got iPads. I, I haven't, I'm not in the reach of an iPad right now, I've shown you. They've iPads, others tablets. But on those tablets or iPads or CDs, there are lessons. And here there'll be a candid record sheet which you have to fill in every time you do your journey. This will become clear as you go on the course. So that feedback, feedback will be on a regular basis with your tutor. And with this um, in mind on how the course is structured, I'd like us to take a break at this point in time, then we're going to go to another introduction of the course before we go into the actual lessons. Thank you very much. For any questions, without much ado, I'd like you to email me or any of your tutors or go to the Moodle e-learning system where you've signed up and make an appointment online. If you're far away from where we are, our centers, and you've got access to Skype, we can make that, that appointment or if you've got uh, access to normal internet without power to Skype, because I know in some countries when you log on to Skype, because of the broadband is so low, they cannot Skype. But what you can do, you can chat. On the chat lines, we can talk. On our system, there is a chat line. Signing off, I am your principal, Dr. John Luke Comona. Thank you very much.